choose a direction for my art. I humbly present to you the project Getting Famous for My Sculptures. Let me break it down for you. 2023 is a year. In a year there are 12 months. During these 12 months I will try my best to make 12 sculptures or more and at the end of the year I will have my first exhibition and become famous. So let's start with the first sculpture. Hey everyone and welcome to a new video. This is the first video in my new series I call Getting Famous for My Sculptures. For this episode I decided to make a wolf pup with a calm expression in its face, as if it is smelling the soothing air gently flowing through its fur. I personally find it a lot easier to work with a sculpture when I have a particular mood I want to capture. This way the sculpture almost gets a life of its own, and it's my responsibility to make it as close to my vision as possible. Often before making the design I have a particular block of wood in my mind. The constriction, constriction of the shape of the wood I select is in a weird way helpful when it comes to the creative process of figuring out what to turn it into. When I make a design for one of my sculptures I rarely end up making the first animal or subject I put down on paper. It is a process where one idea beats the other. Eventually I end up choosing a particular animal and I create multiple iterations of it until I am satisfied. Then I make my way into the workshop. The biggest reason why I chose to make a full body wolf pup for this project was that I never before had made a full body sculpture this size. I do not like to be repetitive with the things I create and I try to walk different paths for every sculpture. And I sometimes think wouldn't it be nice to not have to challenge myself every time I'm in the workshop. But the reward I feel for achieving success with something that was initially filled with self-doubt makes every challenging moment worth it. In the video playing now, I have finished the rough carving and I'm ready to start with the eyes. The eyes are for me a scary thing to work on, because eyes naturally demand a lot of attention and it is naturally harder to get away with mistakes. And that is why I chose to have this wolf close its, its have its eyes closed. Well, not really. Thanks to a ton of references I printed out, I was able to successfully carve them out of the piece of walnut. I am working with a block of black walnut here. Black walnut has hardwood that can range from light to dark brown, while the outer layer often is lighter and can have a red hue. There was a small part of light color in the block the wolf would be made out of. I carefully placed the design so that the nose of the pup would have the light color. I figured it would be a cool effect in the end. So a fun side fact is that I only have wood available for one more sculpture after this. I have been looking for more suitable walnut in Norway the past month. It is not very easy to come by, and the market for that where I live is very bad. Fortunately, I found someone selling dried walnut logs for wood turning. I bought a log and I'm looking forward to work on it. Perhaps I should preserve the lower part of the log so that the sculpture goes from rough to polished, from bottom to top. I have seen some wooden projects online like this, and it has always been very fascinating to me. By the way, I am aware that I am not really talking about what is going on in the video, but more the general process around it. If you want to leave me feedback in the comment section about how this video is put together, I welcome it, and it is very valuable to me. I like to make a front and a side view at least of what I will make, but looking back onto this project, I would appreciate if I had made even more drawings to increase my understanding of all the shapes. Often when I leave my computer, I'm confident that I have figured out how something is put together. But when I start carving, it suddenly becomes very difficult. So far so good. I got the basic structure of the wolf down and now it's time to start with the details. This is a part I have been looking forward to. I get to slowly see how the sculpture will end up looking and I also get to make a lot of interesting decisions along the way. I focus on not making the details too small because realistically this sculpture will end up on a shelf probably a meter or more away from where it will be observed. A lot of it comes down to balance. Having details covering 100% of the wood is something I don't think will look good in itself. But more importantly, it will not let the natural colors of the walnut shine as bright as it should. If you look at pictures of wolves, you notice that the fur consists of millions of individual hairs. But these hairs often connect together in larger clumps especially if the fur is wet. That is what I'm trying to capture through the details I'm creating. I also try to the best of my ability to maintain a random and dynamic pattern. I nearly have no experience prior carving fur, but I ended up liking how it came out with the technique I decided to use here. I would preferably have it be even more three-dimensional. 
This is something I can strive to watch for my future sculptures. You can see that I have taped my fingers here and there along this journey. These are battle scars. These are not deep at all, and they usually are a result of me touching the Dremel bit when I'm working with it. Now that we are over halfway into this video, I would like to spoil what I have in my mind for my next project. It will be an otter arching its back backwards, summoning a large wave from its hands. The plan is to have it finished by the end of February, but if it will take more time, it's alright. By the way, I am making a lot of drawings in my sketchbook of different parts of the wolf when I get stuck at a difficult area. Here are some examples. It is also a great way to learn about anatomy and so on. What has caught my attention particularly is how much the anatomy of one animal translates to another. So here is a design decision I was not that satisfied with. It's not the design itself I didn't like, but it was that it ended up looking too flat. If I could have the leaves protruding more out, I would like it a lot more. This is of course much more difficult to achieve, because it requires you to keep in it in mind and preserve enough wood for that when you are at the rough carving stage of the project. When I filmed my clips for this video, I did a mistake by not visualizing well enough how the video would end up. This plays a huge role into how a final YouTube video will look, and it also makes the editing process a lot easier. Since you kind of already have a rough map over what goes where and in what order. One thing I have noticed is that if I take my time and really think through a project to get a good start, it often translates into the rest of the project. I guess the same thing can be said for other things in life as well. To my surprise, halfway into this project, I came across some knowledge that walnut contains a toxin called juglon. I have already been careful to wear a mask when working in the workshop because of regular sawdust. But from now, I will take extra care when I'm working with walnut. I read on Reddit that you will need to get exposed quite a lot before it becomes a problem for humans, but uh, I will have to try to find some more reliable source of information for about it. This wolf carving has a pretty symmetrical pose. It makes it an easier project to go through with, but I would like in the future to go for a more dynamic pose, perhaps capture a predator in the middle of a hunt, or an animal taking a leap of faith. I guess I will have to try to make a human sculpture as well. This must be the ultimate test. Just like it is hard to get away with mistakes when it comes to the eyes, it is also very hard to get away with mistakes when it comes to the human body. Since we are all so used to the shapes a human body consists of. I was not sure if I should add fur on the back legs, but I decided to do it. All in all, I think it was a good decision. But compared to the fur on the wolf's face, I decided to leave the fur on the legs a lot less detailed. We are actually approaching the end of the project now. If I would have done something different, it must have been to invest more time into the planning process. This is something I say to myself after every single project. And a project without some hand sanding is not a project. So here's the result after adding the lines on the side of the nose. Uh, well, I think it came out okay, but if I could go back in time, I would just keep them smooth. But this is a learning experience for me, so I am glad I tried it. Here is a part of the sculpture that ended up getting rejected. Who knows if it would have been cooler with these swirls on the ears. I just saw the natural wood pattern that already was there, and that is why I chose to keep the ears clean. Making some rough lines with a pencil made it easier for me to make a decision. So now all the details has been added to the wolf and it's pretty much finished but it's not cleaned and that is what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna skip the process because it's pretty boring to watch and I'll get back to you with the result. I just wanted to add a few seconds of the hand sanding process to give you an idea of how time consuming this part really is. Okay, so now the wolf has been sanded to an acceptable level. There are still some small spots here and there, but uh, I can work on it for 100 hours and it won't be perfect. Now it's time to apply the oil. I'm brushing away any uh, dust before I apply the oil. My workshop has a lot of dust in it, so it might not be the best place to oil my sculptures. I made sure to cover the sculpture with a large cardboard box to prevent dust uh, attaching to the oil. 
I used four coats foil for this sculpture. It was time consuming to apply, but enjoyable as a part of the process. You can now see the bright part of the nose I was talking about earlier in the video. I am glad it made such a great contrast. Well, that's one out of 12 sculptures finished, and here's a sketch of my next one. Hopefully I get to make this uh, series a really epic one this year. So uh, I hope you will join me on the other episodes, and until that, bye bye.